Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up, Elon says, Tesla 500 mile range semi truck starts shipping this year, Cybertruck next year. This in response to the Master Plan Part 2, where Tesla first started talking about the Tesla Semi. This is from Tesla's 2020 impact report. In the EU, electric semi trucks are allowed to be 2 tons or 4,400 pounds heavier than diesel equivalents. In the United States, that allowance is 0.9 tons or 2,000 pounds. More importantly, at the time, Tesla said when fully loaded, the Tesla Semi should be able to achieve over 500 miles of range. This truck will be able to reach an efficiency of over 0.5 miles per kilowatt hour. The question then becomes what amount of batteries will be needed for Tesla to achieve 500 miles of range when fully loaded. When it comes to electric vehicle range, the aerodynamics or the coefficient of drag have a bigger impact than the payload does. So think about the semi, whether it's loaded or unloaded, it's going to have the same aerodynamic profile. Heavy duty vehicles like semi trucks will typically have higher PSIs, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 90 PSI for less rolling resistance. But I went out on the market and looked at just a few of the other Class 8 electric vehicles in the market. Kenworth Class 8 has a 396 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is good for 150 miles of range or 0.38 miles per kilowatt hour. Lion's electric truck, a 480 kilowatt hour battery pack for 250 miles works out to 0.52 miles per kilowatt hour. Remember in Tesla's 2020 impact report, they said Tesla Semi should be over 0.5. Volvo's truck coming in at 0.49 miles per kilowatt hour. And this brings us to Tesla Semi estimates. So a 715 kilowatt hour battery pack, if it's good for 500 miles, that works out to a 0.7 mile per kilowatt hour efficiency. If we assume these new Model Ys have around a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, that means one Tesla Semi will have the same amount of batteries as 10 Model Ys. Over two years ago, Elon said in an email, it's time to go all out and bring the Tesla Semi to volume production. It's been in limited production so far, which has allowed us to improve many aspects of the design. He said production of the battery and powertrain would take place at Giga Nevada with most of the other work probably occurring in other states. Pepsi has been waiting for its order of 100 Tesla semis now for a while. It's looking for the first 15. The most recent update was they were going to get those 15 in January of this year, which presumably still has not happened. Looking at 2020 United States greenhouse gas emissions by sector, transportation came in at 27%. Then breaking down the transportation sector itself, we have medium and heavy duty trucks composing about a quarter of the greenhouse gas emissions for the transportation industry. Checking the semi page on Tesla's website, zero to 60 with 80,000 pounds in under 20 seconds. They're saying under two kilowatt hours per mile, which is in line with the math we went through earlier and a drag coefficient of 0.36. The expected base price is still 180,000 and the base price for the 300 mile range variants, 150,000, reservation still 20,000. Very interested to hear feedback on this center cockpit style. Last year, Electrek spoke to some sources saying Tesla was building the semi in limited volume at this new factory at the Giga Nevada site. When that factory was to be completed, the sources were expecting a production capacity of the Tesla semi of five trucks per week, and the plan was still for volume production to happen at Giga Austin once Tesla can also ramp up battery cell production. In Tesla's latest Q2 update, they still have the Tesla Semi listed as TBD and in development. If you go all the way back to Tesla's Q4 call in 2017, Elon was asked specifically about the Tesla Semi and investments needed. He said, so if you take four years, I think 100,000 units a year is a reasonable expectation. As for clarification for the Tesla Semi, to which Elon said yes. So if you take that four years, that would have put us at Q4 2021, and clearly we are not in any stratosphere where Tesla will be doing 100,000 units a year of the Tesla Semi. I'm showing you this not to make Elon look bad, but as a reminder that this is probably the ultimate goal for the Tesla Semi. To get to this type of run rate, it'll just take a few years with everything that's happened. When it comes to cleaning up the air, the importance of this vehicle can't be overstated. I think there will be a ton of demand. Once again, just will be a matter of how fast Tesla can produce. For Elon to tweet this out, it makes me think that he's developing confidence in the 4680 production ramp. I do have an update on that point. I can't share anything yet, but 
stay tuned. An update on master plan part three, Elon said, coming soon, part three is about scaling sustainable energy at a civilizational level to enable a bright future for Earth. Remember part one of a two-part video series on this very topic coming this weekend. I know at least a few of you will really appreciate this. I'm at Tesla's Gigafactory and their robots play Super Mario Brothers. It looks like BYD is already supplying its Blade battery to Tesla and the first vehicles with these batteries set to come off the line as soon as August. Shanghai, however, still has no plans to use these Blade batteries, just Giga Berlin for now, of course, in the Model Ys. Expected to roll off the line within one month at the earliest, that is from late August to early September. Mass use of these BYD power batteries in Tesla models may not happen until next year, so initial production may be limited. A source at Tesla's Shanghai plant said it hasn't seen any BYD batteries on the production line at the plant and hasn't heard of any plans to carry them out either. Jordan at The Limiting Factor did a great video on the BYD battery. I just wanna show you this one slide, although it's for a Model 3 example. If you look at the middle row, it's the BYD blade. The dollar per kilowatt hour should have been lower than CATL's prismatic cells, meaning the pack cost, of course, is around 18% more affordable with a range that's about 10% better or an extra 25 miles when comparing the BYD Blade battery to CATL's Prismatic Pack. Of course, some assumptions were made, but the BYD Blade battery should be pretty safe and have pretty good performance. So we need to watch these Model Ys coming out of Giga Berlin over the next few months to see if anything changes with range and to try to get a handle on what's going on with these new packs. It's good to see this as plenty of Uber customers getting in Teslas didn't know how to open the door Doors, so now when an Uber is on route to pick somebody up, they get this notification on how to open the door. This company Autonomy is trying to change how customers can actually get into electric vehicles rather than owning them and paying, taking on debt and further differentiating from very short term, you know, one or two day rentals. Autonomy basically has a program where you can rent Teslas on a monthly basis starting around $490 a month. So Autonomy's EV subscription service, they're looking to order 23 thousand electric vehicles worth over a billion dollars. Of course, Tesla is the number one biggest order, expecting to sell about 8,300 EVs for about $443 million. This company launched the subscription service in January, currently has a thousand cars, all of which are Tesla models. But we do expect our biggest customer uh, or our biggest purchase order, which is going to be with Tesla, to start being filled right away. Um, we've, we've placed an order for as many as 8,300 cars from Tesla alone. As these production facilities come online and these products become available to consumers, autonomy is just another way to get access. We also are, interestingly, not selling you a car. We're not lending you money. And as such, you can put this on your credit card. It is a month to month offering, so far less commitment. It does not show up as debt. So it leaves you with available borrowing uh, capability. So it is really modern in the sense that it's also 100% digital. You don't have to do anything offline. There's no negotiation. Everything's menu driven. So if somebody wanted to rent a Model 3 Performance over the summer with no commitment and no hassle, this seems like a pretty cool option. Redwood Materials said, when our copper foil production begins this year, Redwood will reduce CO2 emissions by 83% annually compared to the current Asia-based supply chain. Once again, Panasonic at Gigafactory Nevada will be among the first of our partners to source this critical anode component. Since I know none of you have heard this news yet, yes, Elon did sell another $7 billion of Tesla stock. After the sale, he still has about 155 million shares worth around $134.5 billion or 15% of Tesla. Sawyer asked him if he was done selling. Elon said yes. Now we all know Elon said he was done a few months ago and that didn't turn out to be the case. Personally, I won't be surprised if he sells more Tesla stock over the next few months. Either way, he said in the hopefully unlikely event that Twitter forces this deal to close and some equity partners don't come through, it's important to avoid an emergency sale of Tesla stock. Although one could classify this as an emergency sale, I suppose. Ian then asked, so if the Twitter deal doesn't close, will you buy Tesla stock again? To which he said, yes. TOSV asked, have you thought about creating your own social platform if the Twitter deal doesn't come through? Elon said, x.com. 
Elon is already and will continue to get a ton of pushback because of this tweet in April saying no further Tesla sales planned after today. Once again, the keyword was planned. He didn't have a plan to sell and plans change. As a long-term Tesla investor, honestly, I couldn't care much less about Elon selling his Tesla stock. Now, if I thought it was because he changed his opinion on Tesla or something like that that's different, that's definitely not the case. This is most likely due to the Twitter situation. And it's almost like Elon warned us this was going to happen at the shareholder event. He told us, hey, if Tesla stock goes down, don't worry, just buy the dip. RBB24 gives us an update on Giga Berlin. If you recall, there were some upgrades taking place at Giga Berlin presumably due to the giga casting machines that were making around 60% scrap material that reportedly was being cut down to around 10% after these upgrades. The latest information is saying around 5,000 people are currently employed at Giga Berlin. Take this with a grain of salt, but IG Metall's previous reports that workers were unhappy was somewhat validated when Tesla gave a 6% raise to some employees. Now, IG Metall is reporting that newly hired employees are getting more money than newcomers a few months ago, and that Tesla is still having problems in finding skilled workers in the region. Tesla's Model S Plaid has been tagged and now it's up again as it's been defeated at the Nürburgring by the Porsche Taycan. These two have been going back and forth. The latest version of the Taycan beat the Tesla by two seconds, doing a lap time of seven minutes and 33 seconds. This Taycan had a performance kit that's only available in Germany and only for the 2023 model year Taycan Turbo S Sports Sedan. Go ahead and pause the screen if you want to read some of the actual updates. If you want to watch the record breaking lap, I'll include a link to this video below. And the question now becomes, where is the Roadster when you need it? Unfortunately, not in this tweet, which somewhat validates my expectations that it's not going into production anytime in 2023. Inflation data came in better than expected and the markets have been liking it so far today. Month over month, inflation was flat, which is nice to see. And year over year, the headline reading was 8.5% for this month and the core was right around 6%. So relative to expectations, the three main readings actually all came in 20 basis points under the expectation. The headline 8.5%, month over month, 0% compared to the 0.2 expected, and the core month over month, 0.3% compared to 0.5 expected. So we're seeing disinflation, meaning the rate of inflation is slowing down, not deflation where these numbers would actually be negative, meaning prices are going down. They're just not going up as fast. If this trend continues, that means we may see less Fed tightening throughout the rest of this year. We still, of course, need to watch the labor market as that's one of the Fed's two-part dual mandate. And don't forget, many people are still expecting food and energy shortages later this year toward the winter, so we're not necessarily out of the woods yet by any means. Ford said today that every car it makes in Michigan will be assembled using solar and other renewable energy sources by 2025. This in tandem with DTE Energy, under which the utility firm will add 650 megawatts of new solar energy in the state for Ford. Last up for today, Frank has a great question and let me know what you guys think. Is the frunk in the US called a fruit in the UK? That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.